Hi guys, John Flores again with a long-awaited brand new episode of Inside the Studio. It's been a while since I've gone into the weeds with production stuff, but some of you love it, and for those of you who do, here we go. Remember I did a, an earlier clip here on my YouTube site about honoring your vision, and that is sticking with the way you hear something in your head until and unless the, unless the musicians and the singers and whatever give you better ideas, honoring your vision and making sure that that's what ends up as the final product. Well, the interesting story that we start with is background vocal levels. Okay, as you know, I specialized in vocal groups. So, you know, pop soul vocal groups, uh, they called me the white boy that made mocha mix music. I loved harmonies all the way back to the Beach Boys, to the Four Seasons, to the group The Association, to the Fifth Dimension. So I loved harmonies and I loved background singers. So most of my career, I mixed the lead vocals and background vocals myself. In other words, I had my hand on those mixer sliders and I raised everything accordingly as the song went on. Sometimes, well, I guess one time in particular at Hyder Recordings, Ed Barton, who was the engineer that day, commented to Larry Cox or John Golden, also Hyder engineers at the time, saying, boy, John really brings up those vocals are pretty loud and it just, it looks outrageous when he does it on the board, but when we sit back and you listen to the mix, it really works. Well. Granted, I tend to like to goose the background vocals, raise the background vocals. Just a little sidelight, in the late 1960s when I was a staff producer at RCA, RCA Studios was a union shop, which means that producers weren't allowed to touch the board. We weren't in the musician's union. So I had to sit back and kind of say, raise this, lower that, raise this, lower that. And it was very frustrating. It was like mixing by remote control. So by the time I had spent several years away from RCA and independent studios, I got used to mixing the voices precisely the way I wanted them. Well, let's fast forward to 1986 with my second favorite cut of all time that I produced, Born on the Bayou with Bobby Brooks. This was really innovative at the time in that it had the Atlanta Rhythm Section's drummer, Ronnie Millsap's guitarist, Laura Creamer from the Bob Seeger Singers. Remember the lady singers who went, night moves, night moves. Just love them. So, and Born on the Bayou was a, a kind of an odd mix of dance, country, and pop. With all these elements going on at the same time, it was so fun. Johnny Neal, the Nashville keyboardist and arranger, worked with the guys on the rhythm section arrangement. So anyway, we go into the studio and it's time to mix. And Ron Reynolds, Ron Snake Reynolds, country music hall of fame engineer, and my dear friend, along with his wife, Jade, my dear friend Ron Reynolds mixed Born on the Bayou. Now with Ron, I don't get to mix the vocals. I, I have such complete trust in him that I just let him do his thing. He's the only engineer that I ever did that with. But in retrospect, once I got Born on the Bayou out of the mixing room, for 30 some years, I have wished that some of the licks, the background licks, had been raised. I wish that I had had my hand on that fader and brought them up. So when you hear Born on the Bayou, you hear the women sing, Born on the Bayou, and that's an echo part. All of that is perfect right where Ron had them. But the ladies are doing things throughout the song like, ooh, 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 ooh. And I wanted those raised for 30 some years, I wanted those raised to match my vision. The thing I always heard in my head and had been missing all these years. Well, a couple of days ago, I had an epiphany. 
we had done a, oh, I don't know, nine minute, 11 minute dance track on Born on the Bayou where it broke the rhythm section down and stopped. And at one point it was just the bass player and the women singing, who, 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 who. And I thought, well, they're the parts I want. Why don't I just steal these parts from the dance mix where the rhythm section isn't behind them at the moment and just slide them into my finished mix, the 2021 version of Born on the Bayou. And now I have my vision. I couldn't be happier. I got to tell you, I couldn't be happier because I love this track and I love those background vocals. So I'm going to give you an example here of where they are kind of in the background when Ron mixed them. These are the obscure parts that probably nobody cares about, background parts, but I do. And so here's the before and here's the after. Oh, So I'll post the new mix under this video and have a listen. I, I think you'll I think you'll really like it. I thought it was good before, but now it's exactly what I heard in my head back when we put it all together. Okay, and if Laura Creamer, Sue Sheridan, and Andrea Robinson, who sang those parts, are for some reason watching this video, check yourselves out. Now we can hear you for the first time. Okay, well that's it. Honoring your vision, background vocals, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Okay, so thanks for watching. Take care, you guys. Bye-bye.